of the Embassy of Nicaragua in Washington, D.C., and I was asked to speak about the Nicaraguan government, perhaps, and its relationship with Afro communities. And to that effect, I just wanted to comment on the fact that the the government of national reconciliation and unity, one of the one of the aspects that we're most proud of, in addition to uh, social, economic gains, etc., and one of the ones that unfortunately is the least discussed, is the fact that we have really accomplished tremendous gains with our Afro communities on the Nicaraguan Caribbean coast. Um, I actually work for His Excellency Francisco Campbell Hooker, who happens to be the first Afro descendant ambassador in Nicaragua's history. Uh, it's something that was done under the current Sandinista government. In addition to that, we have, from 2007 onwards, uh, unleashed a national land titling program which gives indigenous mosquito communities and Afro-descendant Creole communities uh, land titles and, and restore their property rights, you know, for the first time in history. We have incorporated indigenous and Afro rights into our constitution. Um, we have increased the autonomy and representation of the RAN and the RAS, that's the North Atlantic uh, regions, south and north in Nicaragua, um, into our political structures. And it's, it's basically something that we take very seriously. It's something that we, we, we deal with on a foreign policy level as well. Uh, at the embassy, we've had several activities. We had we just co-presented with the IDB a documentary called The Black Creoles, which focuses on on the Afro communities on the Caribbean coast and how historically they were ignored, they were excluded, um, and and now it's it's something that, as a whole of government approach, is trying to be readdressed, and it's reflected in in something as simple as 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 polling numbers, and it's, it's, I guess, perhaps it's a little bit distasteful to cite polling numbers, but the fact is, is that historically the, the Caribbean communities weren't, weren't voting for, for Sandinista candidates. It's something that in the, in the last elections, just in November, you saw something that was dramatic, which is where communities were voting 80, 90 percent for the government, because I think they had seen for the first time a government respond to their needs. Uh, so it's something that we, we continue to pursue and, uh, and uh, we hope to, to bridge our, our communities. I know Francisco, uh, the ambassador Francisco Campbell Hooker will uh, eagerly uh, work with uh, any of the organizations. Um,